This is Christopher with Johnja.net and the Time Shifters podcast, and I am here with the Gill man himself, Rico Browning. Sir, thank you so much for joining us here in Cincinnati. Sure, Christopher. I'm glad to be here. Uh, last night we got the chance to sit down and watch a uh, 3D print of the Creature from the Black Lagoon, of which you starred, of course. You joined us for a brief Q&A, and there was a few questions back and forth, and one of the things that I, I think I might have actually even asked, and it struck me as kind of interesting, is that as iconic as the film is now, when you guys were making that film, you, you guys really didn't have any sense of it being anything other than just another creature feature. Well, we just thought it would be another film. And the stars, Julie and uh, John, they thought it was kind of a B-class movie and that it would show in the theaters for about a week and then just disappear. And it did, but then gradually, it became a very popular movie, and everyone was proud to be in it. Right. Now, I know um, at the time, a lot of the underwater photography and everything was fairly um, primitive at the time, and also kind of uh, groundbreaking for that film, wasn't it? Wasn't The Aqualung was only invented really just a few years prior, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe you're correct. Um, we used some of the first Aqualungs in that film, and uh, the cameraman... It was his first underwater movie. He was a topside cameraman. And he built the housing for the cameras. And uh, they flooded twice, by the way. <laughs> and they repaired them you know, overnight, sort of. And we filmed the next day. But it was kind of a primitive beginning, uh, particularly underwater. I think it's funny that you know, it's printed it wasn't the Aqualung being used for the you know, one of the first times in film, and you're one of the few people that didn't get to use it. That's correct. <laughs> I used an air hose. Just an air hose. Now, uh, beyond the creature, you did all the creature films for Universal, and after that, you, you stayed in the film career, uh, and eventually becoming, you did a lot of uh, uh, a director, and I remember you mentioned that you, did, uh, you directed the underwater scenes in the James Bond film Thunderball. Thunderball and Never Say Never Again. And that is, I mean, that is still one of the most iconic underwater fight scenes. Well, I guess the list of underwater fight scenes might be short, but I mean, that is an incredible scene. What were some of the challenges dealing with that many people, or was that the challenge, just dealing with so many people at once? That was a challenge, and, uh, you know, it was difficult to communicate underwater because in those days we didn't have underwater communication. We went by hand signals and we rehearsed the scenes above water on a barge, go down, attempt to do the shots. If we did, we succeeded. If not, we'd go back upstairs, rehearse again, and go back and try again. Did you ever run any instances where you, you, you do it, you think you've got it great, then you found out that the camera didn't work? No, not, no, <laughs> not really. Uh, the cameramen uh, on that show were excellent. Um, Lamar Boren was an experienced underwater cameraman and Jordan Klein who was also a cameraman uh, was an experienced underwater cameraman. Well, I know your your list of uh, the, the things you've done it goes on and on and you, you just list and I'm not I'm not going to take too much of your time here but I just wanted to thank you so much for coming to Cincinnati and joining us here at the Comic Expo. I hope you have a great time and you know just thanks again it was an honor to meet you. Thank you it's my pleasure.